Hey folks, there is a new Gameport Toolkit out, so in typical Apple fashion, they really never release any release notes or anything of that nature. I typically browse our Mac Gaming on the subreddit if you are interested in kind of a community of people kind of posting their updates on how, basically how my channel has been. Um, you can see here now that Gameport Toolkit 3 supports HDR, so the previous um, videos I've made on this was showcasing the DLSS hijack. Um, so if you just log in, go to the site, you can see the two things are available. They actually, I've never seen this. You could download just the in, in evaluation in, in environment, which is kind of what you need. So I'm just going to do a quick tutorial for those who've never seen my previous videos. What this involves is crossovers. The preview version has a patch for, I think, like Gameport Toolkit 3, but they keep making beta as Apple does. So they give you instructions and read me. I'm just going to visually showcase what you have to do. Once you show the package and go in, you have to replace these two folders, which you just copy or drag and drop. Um, one is the crossovers and then one is uh, the Gameport Toolkit files. Um, and then you notice here that there's a difference in what I have in my package versus what was copied over because in the readme files, it says you have to basically remove the on metal FX um, things that are appended from Apple. And what I typically do, if you were paying attention in the previous uh, seconds of this video, is that I copy preview, um, crossovers preview, and then rename it as beta 5. So I have a beta 4 and then crossovers preview as it came originally. Um, it's just for like testing purposes so I know which app to open. The last thing I showcased here is they say that in the C drive of the crossovers bottle, and you have to drag and drop couple, two more files in the system 32. So obviously I've already done that, but I'm just showcasing you the fast way to get there is from crossovers and hit open C drive and then drag and drop the files that you just put over. So one last thing is from my testing, if you need to, uh, what you see here in the video is enabling this in terminal so you get the metal effects thing. Basically what I'm showcasing here is that from my testing, um, obviously this isn't like scientific, so to speak, but I am getting pretty much a little bit better performance. I'm showcasing a screenshot here because I think a lot of old videos or YouTubers, they like show the full thing and I'm just trying to get the information out there. The 73 FPS has frame gen on and the reason I did this is just to showcase from a previous video I did where I had frame gen on and I was comparing the native. Of course, take in mind that, you know, a scientific method, I would have retested everything. But as I, you guys may know, I have a kid. I, I gotta make these videos out so I get tw like 20 bucks a, a year or something. <laughs> Anyways, jokes aside, 73 frames per second actually matches the FPS that was on the native that I was showcasing before. So interesting that these Gameport toolkits, um, as they keep getting better, it's almost like I'm questioning why is Apple even pushing to get um, things on the App Store natively? I think they just want to get a piece of the pie instead of Steam taking over everything, in my personal opinion. Um, then yeah, Crossover still doesn't have Metal 4 stuff. So it's something to keep in mind. Here's some gameplay footage. Now, I'm doing Spider-Man, um, <clears throat> so I did test out, if you've seen my previous Snapdragon video, Spider-Man 2 does work because Windows 11 ARM has a Canary build that actually allows for AVM, AVX2 instructions, so Spider-Man 2 runs on ARM, now Mac, Apple Silicon is ARM, but they have yet to kind of translate that. I think if Parallels can get, um, you know, some traction, they get DX12 going, but kind of what you're showing on screen here is, uh, so I'm running 20 Mac 26.1. So everything's like a moving target. I'll, I'll praise this is that I'm constantly updating the Mac. I'm constantly updating crossovers, constantly updating game port toolkit. You can see here, I was getting some issues, um, when I was doing frame gen. So I turned it on and off and finally got better. Um, but in my perspective from gaming, I think that you'll, you'll see. Um, this is a previous video of Gameport Toolkit Beta 1, and then obviously on ret Retina Resolution. So again, not super scientific, but you can see better performance um, and stabilization after some tweaks. So the only thing is to tweak around. I think Ultra it's performance Mac gaming. And showcasing but here, we'll say that um, comparing. I do this like is quick time to quick time recording. Almost a 10 Gameport frames Toolkit per second so boost. Users who um, want to play games can play them. So what I want to talk about here, I'm not sure if I've actually showcased this before on my YouTube channel, but I did have Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. And then when we go into the performance, basically, in my opinion, it's not playable at all. I think it's a bug in the Unreal Engine or however this game was developed, because um, you can see here as I tweak the video uh, settings, I the, the reason I'm doing this is if you look on the right on the metal HUD, usually when you change things to performance, you have the scaling target resolution, which should be your native Mac resolution, or if you're on Retina, it will be like 3, 3K. And then the scaling input 
or the target, sorry, I said that backwards, should be lower. But you can see here they both say 1512 by 851, which are exactly the same. Um, so I couldn't get the Metal FX scaling to actually do anything. And then I was even testing it out on doing FSR to see if FSR works or something. Usually when you do FSR and you change the settings, then the Metal FX goes away. Maybe I'm missing something in this game where there's an apply function or button. I couldn't really figure it out, but basically, um, you're just basically watching me click back and forth. All this to say, I'm going to skip ahead in the video. Basically, like 10 frames per second, super choppy, everything on low. So I would say this game is not playable. Or like, I don't know, some people, like, they just really want to play these games and they'll play at any frames per second. But yeah, not playable. So again, the state of Mac gaming. Now, the one game I am super addicted to is Dota 2. I was literally playing pretty late to 3 a.m. But I will say that I was at my parents' house and they were watching the kid um, and he was sleeping. And, you know, you know, you got to get some gaming in, all right? All right? The, the wife's out of town, right? Sometimes the boy's got a game. Sometimes the boy's got a game, right? But anyways, what I'm showcasing here is the watch feature. This is in Gameport Toolkit 5, and the thing I want to say about this is that previously, I think it was Gameport Toolkit Beta 2 and 3, it was just unplayable. I couldn't really even think about playing, couldn't even watch the tab. When you did the watch tab, it was super laggy. Now it runs, but of course I have my Snapdragon, so um, I'll be playing on that. All this to say, folks, is that, yeah, Apple just releases updates you never know about them i find all the updates in gameport toolkit sorry in the mac gaming subreddit and obviously i make videos and if you're on youtube and you haven't been on that subreddit i recommend browsing if you're a fanatic of gaming on mac which are arm and then check out the snapdragon video which is what i just post you know hopefully someone will figure out how windows added the avx instructions to arm and hopefully we'll get that in crossover soon so you can play spider-man 2 and stuff of that nature um, I think the Snapdragon X Elite 2 is coming out soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick that up. And there's rumors that the MacBook M5 is coming out. Maybe I'll pick that up. <sighs> All to say, folks, enjoy your day. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.